So we'll start off with the one that ended closest to when we are recording, and that is the Kansas City Chiefs, 42, and the Buffalo Bills, 36, in overtime. And, brother, uh, this was, I mean, just a back-and-forth haymaker after haymaker in the fourth quarter. Patrick Mahomes surpassed Russell Wilson with the most postseason passing yards among quarterbacks in the first five seasons since 1950. Um Chiefs 29-5 and five when scoring a TD on their first offensive possession uh, since Mahomes became a starter. That includes the playoffs. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You look at the quarterback comparison, uh, Josh Allen played about as perfect as you can play and still lost the game. Uh, 27 yeah. out of 37, 329, four TDs, no, touch, or no interceptions. Uh, he had 68 rushing yards. Patrick Mahomes on the other side, 33 out of 44, 378, four TDs, zero interceptions, 69 rushing yards. Uh, this was, uh, let, let's start off with this. Gabe Davis, or Gabriel Davis, the, Gabriel the kid Davis. from UCF, uh, coming into this game, he had 35 receptions on the year. He had six touchdowns on the year, and he scored four touchdowns in this game. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, I just, I don't even, I can't, I can't make sense of this. It, it, nobody has done this. They talked about it on the broadcast. Four receiving touchdowns. Is absurd. Yes. Jerry Rice didn't do that. Nobody has ever done that. And now that first off, that kind of shocked me that nobody's ever done that because we have had some pretty high scoring games. But yeah, but it's usually with massive offenses that spread the ball right. around a lot. That spread it around. Exactly. And and this guy, it I'm not gonna say that Davis came out of nowhere because he's always kind of been a threat, but they could never find a guy to put on him. It was really, really interesting what they, they did. They did a great job of saying, Diggs, you're not going to beat us. And the Bills said, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. We we won't go to Diggs all night because Diggs probably had his worst performance, you know, definitely of the playoffs and, and maybe of the year. And and he just didn't get a lot of looks, didn't get a lot of balls, didn't get a lot of touches, and it didn't matter. It just yeah. didn't. They just said, we're going to lock him down. And the Bills said, great. It great. was uh, other guys that will step up. It was it was strange to look at the way that the game played early, right? It was, um, yeah. you know, 14-14 at the half, and then you get into the fourth quarter, and what was it? it four lead, tain, uh, che- excuse me, lead changes or ties in the last, like, 124 seconds. Yeah, it was I like mean, a minute and 54 seconds. Um, the lead changed, like, four times. They scored 25 total points. Uh, and, and, and that in that span of time, it was just score, 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 score. Um, yeah. If, so, so if they had the lost, is, uh, go ahead, go ahead. To say the defenses weren't like playing well in this game was was wrong. All of that happened at the end, but that's when the defenses are just completely gassed. Which which I will tell you, I've now it, it has taken me a long time. You know me, I'm not quick to just change things just because they don't go the way most people want them to go, right? Like right. just because you don't like the outcome doesn't mean we change a rule, all right? But I do think I have evolved on the overtime rule, and it's for this reason. I used to be a firm believer that defenses get paid too, yeah. right? But if you but if you look at defenses, and that was always the rule, is, is, is they're, they're a part of the team as well, and they have to stop somebody. But the game has evolved so much into all of the benefits help the offense and scoring touchdowns. They did the thing where feel if you kick a field goal, you know, the other team still gets shot because kickers can make it from 50. Well, the reason they did that was because kickers were too good. So they realized we've got to evolve the rule. Well, well now they have to realize that the game has become so offensive friendly that, that scoring for, 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 for these, these super teams is just not a hard thing to do. Stopping them is virtually impossible. Especially late in the game, like when you said, or what you yeah. said. All these defenses are just totally gas. I mean, if they, you have to play. nothing left. Yeah, yeah. If you've got to play against uh, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and those speedy receivers for an entire game, uh, your cornerbacks are either gassed or they're out. Right? Yeah. So, so I, in our group chat, I... I'm watching this game. I see Josh Allen and them score 13 seconds left. And all I can think of is, man, extra football would be awesome here. 
the team I want to win is leading. They have the lead. And I'm thinking this game deserves overtime. And the second we got overtime, realization came in. And I thought, oh, no, overtime actually kind of ruins this game. Because now you're left with whoever wins the coin flip is going to win the game. There was no question in my mind of that. When I want it overtime, I know a coin flip is 50-50. But at no point in time did I acknowledge or realize oh, the Bills might lose his coin toss. I just (laughs) thought it was going to happen. I don't know why. And then I thought, oh, but even if the Bills win the coin toss, I win my bet. I, 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 you know, a team that I want to win is going forward. And it's one of those things where it still feels anticlimactic. It's not the way the game was supposed to end. Either give me another full quarter or both teams get a shot at the ball. Yeah, I, I'm I'm totally now, I'm, okay. I'm with okay that. with the I, I'm okay with not doing the full quarter. Okay, I get yeah. that that that's ridiculous. I know that they're wanting to mitigate the number of snaps, but offenses are scoring touchdowns so easily now. It doesn't matter. You got to give the other team the chance. And what's weird is I'm thinking of games that you know the Ravens and the Steelers or, or teams like that, like, well, they go into overtime and they can't score the entire time together because they're God awful. Like I understand there are only some teams that can do this, but when you're playing one of those teams, you got to be able to have a shot. Well, I think it, it, look at it this way. Okay. It, it, this is a very easy fix. Uh, if the first team comes out and scores a touchdown on that first drive, the other team Get to not basically make it the same as a field goal, like well, no, just it is. make the yeah, touchdown. That's yeah, it. that's all you, you got to do. Not, you just you just now change the rule to to where yeah, both teams get a shot at touching the ball. Yes, and that that makes it super easy, right? Because then after that, if Josh Allen were to have taken them down the field and scored another touchdown, and they decided to kick as opposed to go for two, that's right. At that point, then you got a tie ball game, and next score wins, and. And somebody's going to score <laughs> at some point, you know, it, and it may be very quickly. But if you give Buffalo the the ball back, it like just if seems you, anticlimactic because even if the Bills would have won the coin toss and they would have went down, seeing Patrick not have a shot after we've watched that game, it's just anticlimactic to realize, oh, whoever wins this coin toss is going to win this football game. Yeah, yeah, you're you're hundred percent right. 100% right. Um, looking at some of the EPA numbers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you know, EPA per play, the Chiefs got zero on their rushing plays. They got .51 uh, per pass. Uh, the Bills, .21 per rush, .5 per pass. I mean, it, it, this was this was about as well played a game as you could possibly get. I mean, it was just it, it's such a perfect, perfect football game. Uh, for anybody that loves offense, obviously. And and if you like defense, there was enough of that in their first half, you know, some of the third quarter as well. Uh, it went haywire in the fourth quarter, which is what good games do, especially when you got dueling quarterbacks that are able to take advantage when somebody goes out. Hey, if I, uh, if I told you to guess the average depth of target for both Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, uh, what would you guess? Ooh. So I would venture to say that they're very different. Am I right on that? Uh, yeah, pretty different. Okay, I would have guessed that Josh Allen's is substantially larger than Patrick Mahomes. Most certainly. You want me to give you the numbers? Well, I watched. I watched the game, which is why I know yeah. that Josh Allen was dropping bombs, and Patrick was hitting guys three three yards out, and those guys are just the fastest people on the planet. Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, A dot for Josh Allen eight point one, and Patrick Mahomes was five point two. I'm shocked big that it was five. Yeah. I'm shocked that it was five yards. Oh yeah, it's uh, and Josh Allen opened the game up doing something that I haven't seen the Bills do a lot this year, which I might have just missed this. They threw to the running back a ton in the first half of this football game. Now they really didn't do it in the second, but in the first half of the football game, their offense was dink and dunk to the running back, which made that number come way down, way down from oh, what yeah. it normally is. No, you're uh, you're not wrong about that. Uh, he's got at the all. strongest arm in the game right now. Oh and, yeah, and 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 he, I, oh. I, I, I that, think that we deep just pass, saw the two best quarterbacks in like, football. That that deep pass that he threw, obviously Gabriel Davis again, um, yeah. but it, where he threw it over the top of 
uh, what was it? A, a safety too too deep. I, yeah. I I've never like seen anybody be it's able to do that. Dropped in the basket. I mean, yeah. I've seen guys do it, and I've seen the throw happen. It's just not a throw that happens a lot because it's a pretty hard throw. Oh yeah, it's it is incredibly difficult. But he hit over the top of these guys. Yeah. I mean, it was unreal. And so I've yeah, seen this a couple, was, I mean, I've seen guys do it a lot, just not yeah. as often as we see him do it. He's just, it's amazing to me that the, the knock on him coming out of college was accuracy hey. because that, that SOB was about as accurate as I could ever imagine tonight. <laughs> well, I mean, it, but it wasn't just in college. I mean, it was also the same thing uh, in the pros for like the first, what, year and a half. And, yeah, but that team was not good at all. Well, no, they weren't, but it, a lot, some of it had to do with the fact that he was not accurate with the football. I mean, he had a ton of uncatchable passes that he just could not get where they needed to be. And obviously, he has gotten a lot better. He has been developed, like big-time yeah. developed. So uh, I would imagine we'll hear something about Brian Dable taking a job somewhere uh, because what he's done with that offense since he got there has been pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.